All right. Good evening to every single one of you, wherever you may be watching. I'm currently with Pastor Christopher Finley, the founder of Avon Preaching and the author of his most recent book, Seven Keys to Highly Effective Preaching. We're so thankful for his gift to this world through the gift of his writing, and we are wanting to spend some time with him to learn more about him and the call that he has received from God to preach, and furthermore, to give you encouragement that, that you need to preach for the glory of God. So as we're with uh, Chris here this evening, we want to just begin by asking, so tell us a little bit about you, your story, where you were born, you know, where you grew up, and, and the ways that God has kind of facilitated in your life to bring you to that defining moment in New York. So Amen. just take us through your journey and uh, let us know about what has happened and transpired in your life. Amen. Amen. Uh, well, I, at first I want to say, Pastor Justin, thank you so much for having me and the whole TX uh, adult family, young adults, uh, TX youth. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, me, I'm, my name is Christopher. Great to meet you all for those who don't know me. And I love uh, smoothies. I'm from New York. I love smoothies. I love uh, nice. veggie pizza. Uh, I love uh, nachos. That's my favorite food just to get a little a bit more about me. I, I like to run and bike and stay active. But as far as with my calling to preach, I remember since I was younger going into church, whenever there was like a powerful sermon, it just, it would always touch my heart, like bring chills to me. And I remember being 19 years old, around 1920 and walking into a church and hearing a pastor preach. It was in New York City. His name was A.R. Bernard. And when he was preaching, a thought went into my head that said, you can do this. This is what you'll be doing for the rest of your life. And I remember just thinking, you know, be going through a little like, really? Like looking like, okay, I can be a pastor. But, you know, walking. Yeah. Up the church, how, how old were you? How old I was were you? around 19, 20 years old at this time. Okay. So, you know, I, I usually had this PDF file in my computer, PowerPoint. Well, I would put like mood boards, like you can put like, I want to graduate college or I want to start a business. And I want, and then, so I would put, I went in there and I put a picture of that pastor preaching and then I put become a pastor. But then I mm. put it at the age of like 40 or 50, because at that time I calculated, you know what, I'll do business for the next 20 years. I'll become successful and then I will become a pastor. But I didn't really tell anybody. I just buried that calling deep inside of my heart and went along with life you know what was the motivation behind putting it up like why did you want to become a pastor 20 years from when you were 19 or 20 years old because when you know i heard a lot of things about pastors at that time with like this was a mega church it wasn't an adventist church it was a mega church and you know the pastors they were there were a lot of money coming in and you heard rumors like pastors were spending money on things, not for the mission. So I, I don't know. And I didn't feel qualified at that time. I was looking at my life. I was looking at things that I was partaking in and I just didn't feel like I was the pastor type or I was the perfect person ready to be a pastor. Back then my whole take was I had to be perfect before I came to Jesus. And mm. now that I look at it, if I can speak to my 19 or 20 year old self, I would say, no, Jesus is the one who per who perfects you. Jesus is the one who does the good work in you. Like Philippians 1, 6, you know, he that began a good work in you will, will complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. So mm. when you get this calling from God, it's so important to answer it in that time, in that moment, faithfully that the one who called you will prepare you. I didn't know that's how it worked. I just thought that I would have to get my life together first before I was qualified to preach. I want to actually stay and linger here a little bit because you need to tell all of us here that you don't need to be qualified mm -hmm. to, to serve God. 
There, yeah. there is no qualification that you need to meet to be used by God. Is that what you're saying? You know, there, there, there is a one qualification. The one qualification to be truly used by God, I believe, is that you have to have a loving relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm. Once you mm. have that loving relationship where Jesus is pouring the love into you, mm. that's the qualification that you need so that you can pour that love into others. I truly mm -hmm. believe a loving relationship with Jesus Christ is what qualifies us to serve God. Mm. Mm -hmm. So in a loving relationship with Jesus, when you know Jesus and Jesus knows, Jesus knows you, wherever you may be, whatever your condition might be, whatever work you might be engaging in, you can serve God. Amen. And I truly believe that. I truly do believe that. Yet when I was just having the conversation with a pastor today, you know, education is very important. Education, it, it, it allows you to be trained and equipped so that you can serve God in even a might in a mightier way. So we look at people like Paul. You, we look at people like Paul who was highly educated. And I truly believe that education is very significant because look at how much of the New Testament Paul wrote. But when it comes to like, if you look at the disciples, you know, thank God that Jesus chose people like Peter, who we all can relate to, because then it shows that even like Peter's, we can be used, even like John's, we can be used, you know? So I, I definitely feel like we should really study that, how Jesus selected his disciples and look at the mighty work that they did for, for Jesus. Amen. Amen. The mm -hmm. way Jesus handpicked his disciples, you know, we don't know what Jesus was thinking. When he was picking Peter, right? When he, like, we we might think, man, Peter was far from ready or prepared or qualified to be a disciple of Jesus, but mm -hmm. Jesus didn't see him for what where Peter was then. He actually saw Peter for who he could become Amen. in a loving relationship with him. Powerful, Amen. powerful. Amen. So take us through from you know when you first heard the call of God in your life through this particular person. You wrote it down. And you said, all right, 20 years later, maybe. I think yeah. that's when I'm going to do it. Because at that time, I was running a printing company. I had clients that we were doing printing and graphic design for. Uh, when people see, like, a lot of the things I post on social media, by the grace of God, I had about 13, 14 years of training of doing graphic design. You know, after that, I went and worked for a company in New York City. It was a private uh, marketing firm where we had like celebrity clients, we had people like uh, Best Buy, DirecTV, uh, Corona. They were in, but as I was doing designs for some of these uh, brands, you know, I, I didn't feel like genuine when I was doing certain things for like a company like Corona. You know, it was a big budget. These were hundred thousands of budgets, the dollars in a budget that we were working with, but something in me just didn't feel right about like certain things. So, I don't know. I just didn't feel right doing it. I didn't feel like fulfilled. You know, after that, I, I left there. I went into fashion because I really love fashion. And then God opened that door for me. Like these were things that I asked God about. And he opened the door to show me that this is what you want. I'll give you what you asked for. And literally, I saw God aligning my life and opening doors that I asked him for. After I went into the fashion world, I, I did that. I traveled. I went to many different countries around the world, but I still, something in me still felt like it just, it just didn't feel a hundred percent happiness. You know, I would think, all right, I'm, I'm going to on this trip. I'm going to go get to this beautiful Island and we would do social media content and I would go there, take pictures. But then even while I was there, there was something in me that just didn't feel fulfilled. And then finally, uh, I remember when I was about 25, 26 years old, my little brother got into a, a motorcycle accident and unfortunately he died. And oh, man. It, it was in that time when I got the call that my little brother died. It, mm. really, it impacted my life a lot because, you know, I had to question everything. I had to question, all right, where I was at, the businesses that I was taking part in, you know, the, the, the success that I defined it as. And mm. then I saw, actually went and I saw was there and saw my brother in a morgue or on a table and mm. you know, it was really bad it was a truck accident that hit his motorcycle a truck oh, wow. 
cycle. So, you know, watching that whole situation happen, it, it was life changing for me. And that's when I had a real conversation with God to say, like, God, give me strength in this time. And I was crying a lot. And and then I remember God speaking to my heart, put placing literally i know this is god now like when people say okay how do you know it was god that spoke to you because all the things that aligned after that god put a strong impression in my heart get back to church preach the mm-hmm. word of god and mm-hmm. i agree with it i told god all right i'm gonna dedicate my life to sharing your word i'm gonna mm-hmm. dedicate my life to preaching jesus i made that decision five years ago and i remember being pointed by different people in my path to look up Southwestern at Venice University. I looked that up. Uh, I, I received a call from Ranika Hazelton, who was doing the admissions over there. And then watching how God literally aligned piece by piece for me from the scholarships to then being able to go canvassing and then having opportunities to preach, even as a freshman. You know, I had a, I had a professor, Dr. Ingo Sorti, that gave me an opportunity to preach in his church And I remember when I first preached my first sermon, literally just studying the Bible, I fell in love with studying the Bible and finding these gems when you're studying and then wanting to share that with others and then going up to preach the word of God and experiencing what the Bible says as the peace that passes all understanding, literally standing in the pulpit, praying to God and asking God, speak through me, help me. I'm I'm a little nervous. Let me say the right words. Having that Mm -hmm. conversation with God at the same time while preaching mm-hmm. and then 20 minutes later, not fully remembering every single thing or 30 minutes later, but then having mm-hmm. people come to me and saying, wow, like it, it was as if you were just preaching directly to me. And then in, for me, I'm like, thank you so much. Praise God. But I'm like, what did I say? So mm-hmm. the combination of that and just yeah in love with the journey of studying the bible sharing the word of god finding these gems and then after that there was i remember this is when i knew i loved preaching i was so excited to preach and share the word of god and to put mm-hmm. sermons together that there was a mm-hmm. church stevensville church it was two hours away from Keene, and i used to drive two hours just mm-hmm. to be able to preach so it was about mm-hmm. two hours there and two hours back and mm-hmm. they couldn't find anybody else that will come and preach so they were like mm-hmm. hey would you want to have seven dates to preach this year? And I was just like, and they the pastors spaced them out. So it was like every two months. So I would mm-hmm. drive from Keene, two hours there, two hours back. And I was so excited just because mm-hmm. I was a freshman and I had an opportunity to preach. I was willing to drive anywhere. I was like, three, three hours? I'll drive just so I could preach, you know? And that's when oh, I realized. Hold know, on one second. I want to actually go back to that first time you ever preached, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And you said that you were a little nervous and there was like, okay, God, you really need to be with me. You know, when you first were extended the opportunity to preach for the first time, we, we heard a little, about, a little bit about the mental mode and the emotional uh, status and the condition that you were in. And you said you were just filled with the Holy Spirit. You spoke, but you didn't quite remember, you know, what was the thing that God really spoke through you. For you, I want you to just address for anybody that would be given their first preaching opportunity, right? What would, what counsel or advice would you give now as you look back to your first preaching experience? Like what would be the, the counsel that you would, you would give to that one person that would, that, that's on the brink of actually preaching for the first time in their life? I would say to uh, pray, first of all, pray a lot over the scripture. Like mm-hmm. when you pray over the scripture, the Holy Spirit is going to give you what the people need to hear. So first of all, you prayer is one of the most significant things ever because it brings you peace in your life, in your heart. And then Daryl Johnson, this quote changed my life. Mm-hmm. Have you stayed in the text until you met the Lord of the text? So um, you stay in the scripture with the mm-hmm. scripture, praying over the scripture until you literally meet Jesus face to face in the scripture. And Jesus walks with you in the scripture, talks with you, tells you things that you can never find out on your own. The wisdom from God comes from Jesus and you together sitting there in the text like you're sitting on a park bench or you're walking on the on the beach with Jesus. And he's just telling you about the scripture. And then after you're filled with all that wisdom from Jesus, you're going to be able to 
preach a powerful sermon about what Jesus shared with you to others. And it's not about me. It's not about anybody. It's about Jesus Christ and him speaking through you. And if you surrender to God and allow him to do that to you, uh, do that for you, it's going to be a blessing. It's going to be mm. a blessing. Mm -hmm. what, if, what if you don't feel qualified and you, you feel ill-equipped and you've never done this? And you don't know if you can. And you know, th th there's the whole the conversation that happens in your head, in your mind. How do you overcome those self doubts and even the messages from the enemy? Like as you're pouring into scripture and you're praying, that there's that spiritual battle that's going on. Like, how, what, what is it that that could really help you be victorious and overcome that? Mm -hmm. You know, it, it comes back to. Uh, it comes back to prayer and you know it's, it's it's very this is a very important topic because some may argue and say you know preaching is not for everybody and we shouldn't force everyone to preach and right. i completely agree with them you know mm -hmm. preaching is for those who feel that calling deep in their hearts and mm -hmm. feel that they have to share that with somebody they need to share this story of jesus with somebody and for those you know, they may not have the skills or they may not be equipped. And this is where, you know, resources like the book or different videos or adventpreaching.com or, or many of these different trainings that you can find on YouTube for free will come, mm. in, will come in handy. You know, mm. but then there's other situations where you have people that may not have the gift of preaching, but they're forced to preach because there's nobody else there to share the word. There's mm. nobody to preach and especially in different countries around the world you have women that they're the only ones there that can preach but they live in societies where they're so-called not supposed to preach or you know per se these are situations where prayer and the holy spirit working through us is very significant because mm -hmm. you may be there and you need to teach sabbath school or you need to preach the sabbath morning and you're like lord how am i going to prepare i have a week or i have two weeks to prepare a sermon but I don't feel this calling in my heart. I don't feel like I'm adequate, you know. In that situation, I do feel like God can equip people to preach. I do feel like God can give them the, the power and a powerful biblical message, especially if their life is surrendered to God. Now, we mm -hmm. also have other situations where uh, there's people that face anxiety. How do I know that? Because I've had fellow students in my Hamalais class that literally when they go to preach, they start to like move and shake. They're like, they really face anxiety in front of crowds. But, mm -hmm. you know, when I've seen them progress through the through the semester, they preach actually very powerful sermons for Jesus. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it, this is the miracle of God. It's hard to explain. I don't have a direct answer to say this is the correct way or this is the incorrect way. But I will say I know God works miracles. Jesus does right. miracles. You will never actually feel perfectly equipped to preach. It's not mm -hmm. about your feeling. It's not about your emotion. Mm -hmm. It's almost like stepping out in faith, trusting that God will take you through this. And as you're in that moment of obedience, as you're obeying the call of God in your life, you actually experience the equipping and the speaking mm -hmm. of God through you. So. I want to actually talk about how you traveled two hours, two, it, drove two hours every week to this, this church that invited you to really share the word of God for them in their context. So as you're driving back and forth, as you are, as you have given, been given this opportunity to really preach the word of God, what was some of the, I guess, routines that you went through to really prepare yourself for this task and this mission at hand? Uh, I, I just want to share one quick testimony. So when it came to when it came to my first time preaching, this is this is how God like aligns things. I went into this church, Country Life Church, and I remember sharing a little bit about my testimony at Wednesday night worship. And one of the elders pulled me aside, Elder Craig, and he said, um, "You should you should preach. You should share your testimony in front of the church." And I said, "You know, I was actually praying about that." I was talking to God because this year, October 28th, my birthday falls on the Sabbath. And I was mm -hmm. talking to God and I was praying to God saying, Lord, imagine if I could preach for the first time on, on the Sabbath for my birthday. That would be like the biggest birthday present, God. 
but you know, I left it alone because you know, sometimes you think like God, like I don't want to ask too much, or you're thinking like it's not possible. You know, you have faith, but then you're like, you you have things that you're like, all right, don't push it. So then the elder said to me, You're preaching. I said, How 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 am I preaching? He says, All the elders they have dates to preach. So so now they they every elder has their date to preach, and then they they preach for that week. And I said, but yeah, but we need to get approval. And these elders, how why would they allow me to go into the pulpit and preach? He says, No, you're gonna preach that date. October 28th is my day. You should preach. I'm giving you my day. And I was just like, Wow. Like, how is it that the same elder that was at prayer meeting when I was sharing my testimony comes to me and tells me that I should preach, I should share my testimony? And it just has to, and it he has that date that's my birthday that I talk to God about. Oh wow! Wow! You know, so, so so all those things, it was just me. providential. Yeah, it was me saying to God, like, man. After that, I was just in awe. I was just so nervous. I was just like, Lord, this is crazy. I'm actually gonna preach. This is amazing. And then I just started like I remember it was Luke two, uh, forty one when Jesus went, first went into the temple. This was actually the sermon that I answered my baptismal call for, and just the theme of the sermon was uh, my father's business is my biggest priority. Now, when I looked at Jesus's mission and everything that was revealed to him when he saw the sacrificial lamb, when he entered into the the court, the courts, right? Mm -hmm. uh, revealed to him his calling. And instead of going and traveling and staying with the crowd, he stayed back. Mm -hmm. And when they found him after three days of searching, he was in the midst of the teachers and the doctors hearing him both answering their questions. And all who heard him were amazed right. you know, his, at his questions and his answers. And, when, and the way I prepared for that to answer your question was, you know, just spending time in the text and praying to God and then um, seeing what God first had to say to me. And mm -hmm. it was all about my calling. It was all about mm -hmm. the fact that your father's business is your biggest priority. If God called you to be a pastor, Chris, stop focusing on the, these businesses. Stop focusing on getting rich. Stop focusing on being big. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with being rich. Like God used many people in the Bible who were rich. But for mm -hmm. me personally, it's like, yes, you can be rich, but make sure you're first rich in your relationship with Jesus. Make sure... Yeah, you know, let me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me go ahead and ask you this question. This is a compare and contrast question where you talked about how you were in marketing, designing, and then you're traveling the world and you're interested in marketing and design. And you were at one point in this beautiful studying, taking some beautiful pictures. You were, you know, you were actually getting rich uh, by the standard of this world and you were making money. Something didn't sit right with you. It just wasn't, there's something missing, you said. And then I want you to compare that moment to that first opportunity for you to be on a pulpit delivering the word of God. Like how, contrast for us, what, 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 the, what, what your heart and soul was experiencing at these two different moments in your life. My, my, faith, my faith was growing tremendously. Like the, the, when I was traveling, I was reaching for things. You know, my whole goal was I have my passport was to fill it up all the way with as many stamps as possible. Like I, I made a life goal. I said, you know what? I'm going to stack up 50 passports and I'm just going to fill them up with countries all around the world. And, and that was my goal. But I would get these stamps. I would fill them up and it was never enough. Like it was never enough. You would you go to Panama. You stay, go see some of the most beautiful beaches in the world. Indigenous tribes hang out with them. And even after it was over, it was like, all right, what's next? It was never like enough. And it would never mm -hmm. be enough because mm -hmm. the only true peace we could find is in Jesus Christ. But mm -hmm. then when I went to go ask God and started praying to God and asking him to reveal his will for my life, and I started mm -hmm. to have deep conversations with God. And then I would talk to God as a friend. So I was like, God, all right, you want me to be a pastor? Bring me to Southwestern open the door for me to preach or open the door for me to share your word. Mm -hmm. And just seeing that we, we serve a living God that actually mm -hmm. opens doors for us and uses mm -hmm. us in mighty ways. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's amazing. It's like, it just, yeah, you know, it brought me this calmness. 
you know. Yeah, let me go a little deeper because there might be some young people that that is that are either watching or later, and you know they're they're listening to you talk about how God has spoken to you. You felt His calling. How how you were con continually conversing with God, and there was this this uh, inner turmoil. And if they ask you the question, how do you how do you listen to God? How do you know if if if, if what you're feeling is from God, and how do you begin that that communication with God? Like how how would you answer that question? For me personally, I speak to God like through studying the Word, through prayer. And while God was speaking to me, I was heavy in the Bible. I remember I was starting off. I was I spoke to my aunt and I asked her. I said, Auntie, if I want to like read the Bible, like what would you start with? What would you do? And she says, Me, I would recommend starting with the Gospels. So mm -hmm. I started reading through the Gospels and, and started to get to know Jesus for who He was. And mm -hmm. I I really thought He was cool. Like you know, as I started to like read the stories of Jesus and see how he moved and how he healed people and how he answered people and how when he would say certain things, it would just be right to the point. You know, just falling in love with Jesus is the first and foremost thing that transformed my life and helped me. Because as yeah. I started to look at Jesus as being cool, it just made me like him a lot and love him mm. a lot and just, just wanting to get to know him more. And then I started mm look for God in everything. Like as I started to go to work, I would talk to God and I would look for his blessings in my life. And then mm -hmm. when I would see after like studying the Bible prayer, as, as certain things will go into my heart, it, I would look at that as like God revealing his will for me, like me wanting to study now. I, I wanted to study after I said, all right, if I'm going to be a pastor, I want to be equipped. I would like to mm -hmm. be trained properly. I looked at that as God, you know, putting a promise in my heart that, hey, if you want to be equipped, if you want to serve me, I'm going to get you to school. All right. And then after I got to school, my next way I started to talk to God was saying, like, God, I would like to achieve good grades in school. I would like to do good with this. And then getting A's, not really, I never really was like the most talented student in school. Like I had to study really hard, but then like, as these things started to come into my mind and my heart, wanting to achieve, wanting to do more for God, I looked at that as like a, a prayer, a request, or even a promise that he could fulfill. And that's the way I built my relationship with God, like seeking him in his word, looking to get to know Jesus more. And then now having that conversation with Jesus to say, hey, Jesus, um, I want to be used by you in a mighty way. What are my talents? What are my skills? How could I use these gifts that you have given me for you, for your honor, your purpose? And then just step by step going from there. And, and this is where it has led me today. I love it. I love it. So everything begins with Jesus. Like it is your personal relationship with Jesus. And the best way to get to know Jesus is to start in the Gospels. Every, you know, uh, every, every January... There is always a new resolution that many people make to read through the Bible. And what they do is they often begin in Genesis and mm -hmm. then they get to about Leviticus. And it's just like, okay, you know, so what you're saying is start in the Gospels, get to know the person of Jesus, let him awaken the desire in you to get him, get to know him better and deeper, which drives you to more of scripture. And with Jesus as, as your foundation, all scripture begins to come alive and you begin to grow. And, and even your grades, like academics, relationships, every part of your life begins to experience this, this dramatic and pro providential leading of God in your life. And you have personally experienced this. Amen. Amen. You know, like reading Genesis to Revelations is beautiful. It's amazing. But one thing that really changed my life and my perspective of the whole entire Bible was John 1. And if we read John 1, I really love where in John 1 it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. So when I looked at that, I started thinking, like, in the beginning was Jesus, and he was with God? So then when after reading the gospels and getting to know Jesus Christ, it mm. changes our whole lens of the Bible. So like, all right, you, you read the rest of 
the New Testament and then everything's pointing to Jesus. But then mm -hmm. read over from Genesis to Revelations and you go from Genesis to Malachi. Now, mm -hmm. like all of this is speaking about Jesus also. So mm -hmm. that's what the most beautiful thing about starting with the Gospels is, is it opens right. your eyes and your lens to now read the whole entire Bible and seeing like the story of Joseph. Like I can imagine. Right. When I read the story of Joseph now, mm -hmm. I am now with knowing my relation with Jesus, mm -hmm. Jesus was with Joseph in the jail cell. Mm -hmm. Jesus was there. I believe mm -hmm. Jesus was there pouring his peace and his mercy into J Joseph. This, this is beautiful. This is be because once you experience the gospel and you really begin to know the person of Jesus for yourself, Mm -hmm. Not what the youth pastor tells you, not what the parents tells you, not what the other people have, you know, eaten. You're not second hand eating anymore. Once you taste that, no matter how much Instagram and TikTok and Netflix is out there, there's no going back. Is that what you're saying? Amen. Praise <laughs> God. You know, and one way that I believe that any young person who's watching this could mm -hmm. truly start to have a relationship with Jesus is this. When you read the Gospels and you hear the story of the woman who was dealing with the sickness for 12 years, mm. and she just, you know, it came to a point in her life where all the doctors failed her and she just needed to get a touch of the garment of Jesus. And she mm. goes and she pushes through the crowd. And then by the grace of God, her finger touches just the hem of his garment and she was mm. healed. Mm. What you do is, is so important, especially as young adults, as young people, that we use our imagination mm. and we put our put ourselves in her shoes to truly say, what would that be like if you were dealing with a sickness for 12 years and it came to a point when you were just done? You were saying, you know what? I'm not dealing with this no more. I'm hearing about this, this, this savior. I'm hearing about this person who's healing. I'm going to get my healing. I'm not going through this anymore. And she mm. pushed her way through the crowd. And she knew that as long as she got a touch of him, her life was going to change. And it did. And when we put ourselves in these shoes, because that's what thing is so beautiful about the Bible and, and the word of God. The, it's about a whole book of people who lives were changed when they came into contact with Jesus Christ. And mm. to put ourselves in all these stories and saying, this is me. I'm dealing with something that I've been dealing with for 12 years. And if I just get a touch of Jesus, my life is going to change. And then you look at like blind Bartimaeus when they, mm. when he was yelling out the son of David, the son of David, they were trying to silence him, but he just kept uh, yelling out more in desire of ages. It says vehemently, like he was yelling with his soul. Mm. And then finally Jesus said, would you, what would you like to do? I would like to see. All right. Next, you know, he wasn't blind anymore. So as we start to get to know Jesus through the Gospels, put ourselves in, in these stories and say, what, what if this was me? How would I feel? But it is us. We are blind. Right. Are, you know, so, so that's what really helped me, like, get, and it still helps me every day, get to know Jesus more because I'm putting myself in these stories and I'm showing, I'm seeing through the word of God how much I relate to all these people that Jesus is healing. Mm. Because we're all looking for something. We're looking for healing. We're mm. looking for hope. All of us are either bored or just addicted or just too busy. And there's restlessness and there's, you know, there's so much that's going on in our lives where we just need Jesus. We, we, we forget the answer is Jesus. And once you de be develop that relationship with Jesus, out of the overflow of your heart comes the desire to begin to preach the word of God because you believe now once and for all there's no nothing stopping you that Jesus is the answer he is the hope that everybody needs then you begin to have that desire to share that to everyone it was amen. that your story was that amen. your story amen amen and all right, I, wanted, so, I wanted to share one last thing just one last thing uh in Isaiah 53 verse 5 it says, the chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Mm -hmm. And this, when we talk about preaching and preaching Jesus, 
this is the most significant thing ever because we all have like childhoods and things that we go through that mm-hmm. you know they we carry those things with us from the age mm-hmm. of 50 60 70 80 40 like things that has happened to us when we were between the age of 1 and 14 15 20 they affect our lives culture mm-hmm. everything mm-hmm. and you know it says it right here it says and by his stripes we are healed yeah so jesus went and died on mm-hmm. the cross he purchased the right through his mm-hmm. death to heal us and that's mm-hmm. the true gospel that not only did jesus die for our sins but jesus has the power to transform our lives and heal us from anything we have been through so if there's mm-hmm. one thing that any of us are going to preach if there's one sermon that we could share with somebody out there is the mm-hmm. fact that jesus is a healer and he mm-hmm. heals us from everything in our lives so and and that's one thing if anybody has a question about oh what do i preach how could i preach you know, the one sermon, if you're going to preach one sermon, you, you start with your testimony about how Jesus mm-hmm. transformed your life. And you also implement in that sermon the fact that in Isaiah 53, the pro- the prophecy that pointed to the Messiah, through his death, he purchased the right to heal us and transform our lives. And that's good news for anybody. Mm. That is the good news for anybody. Mm-hmm. And God has led you on this journey to be at Southwestern, to be majoring in theology, preparation for the ministry. And through that journey, you felt another compulsion in your heart to write a book. Mm-hmm. Tell us how that inspiration came and why you wrote this particular book. All right. So the inspiration came from just studying the seven parts of a sermon. And so this is Seven Keys to Highly Effective Preaching. This is a student handbook. This is for the students. This is for the simple laymen who are looking for a simple, effective guide to how to preach and shape their sermon, how to use this. This is to be used as a tool. So there's seven parts of every sermon. You start with the introduction where you grab their attention. You second, you state the problem of the situation. What is going on? Joseph is in the jail cell. Joseph is here, the dreams, everything that Joseph thought that was his destiny is now crumbling around him. What happens next? The solution, the solution always, it points to Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Even if Mm. we're preaching from the Old Testament, we Mm. still Mm. should be pointing it to Jesus and the cross. So Mm. the third point key is always have your solution in Jesus. And then mm-hmm. you main point. Every sermon needs a main point. Like, what is the mm-hmm. main point? What do you want them to walk away with? What do you want them right. to remember? And this, I go through this in the table of contents. So if you see the table of contents, it just goes through mm-hmm. these seven keys, simple. Mm-hmm. And then after that application, every single sermon should relate to the hearers of today. So what you're mm-hmm. doing, is you're building the bridge where you're taking the Bible text and the Bible time and culture, and now you're showing how God's word is still living and effective today and relevant. So every Mm -hmm. sermon should have an application. How does this apply to my life today? Why is this significant to me? Why is Mm -hmm. Joseph in the jail cell being significant to me? Well, it's significant because there's going to be times when we have goals, we have dreams, and we're going to go through experiences in our life where we're asking God, Lord Jesus, where are you? Where are you? But if we look at the providence and the sovereignty that, that the Lord had over Joseph's life, we'll see that the, the Lord is always working. Amen. So yeah. that's how that story applies to us. After the, the application, which is the fifth key, you go to conclusion. Mm-hmm. You're restating the main points of the sermon because you're preparing them to make a decision and you mm-hmm. want to them people want to know why why should i make this decision because Mm -hmm. you're reminding them of everything you told them so the conclusion Mm -hmm. wrapping it up and then Mm -hmm. finally the last key is every Mm -hmm. sermon should have a transformation appeal because the word Mm -hmm. it it, we we read it in isaiah 53 5 that Mm -hmm. by his stripes we are healed meaning Mm -hmm. not only does Mm -hmm. god come and save us but he Mm -hmm. transforms and I believe that every time that you open up the word of God, God promised us that his word will not come back void. So it gives us an opportunity to be transformed, 
to get to know Jesus Christ more, to be to accept his love more. So every mm -hmm. sermon that we preach should have an opportunity for somebody to make a decision for Jesus mm -hmm. or give their life to Jesus. So those are the seven keys summed up. Mm -hmm. And with mm -hmm. these seven keys, if, if you, yes. you, can, you can preach a powerful sermon. Yes, yes. And this book comes for such a time as this with the appeal for anyone who is in Jesus Christ to be preachers in season and out of season. Right now, we've been through a global pandemic. The world needs the gospel more than ever before. You have been given a story. And now, in the form of this book, you have a guide that's going to take you through how you can um, cultivate and craft your story with the Word of God and be a powerful instrument and witness for Jesus. Um, for the people that are watching, how can they get a access to this resource and this book, and how how can they actually access you and reach out to you if they if they need uh, the inspiration and some guidance? Amen. Um, anybody, first of all, and thank you, Pastor Justin. Uh, anybody who would like some advice when it comes to preaching or any help. I'm still learning my stuff. I will forever be a student of preaching, but you can follow me at, at Christopher Finley. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook and you can send me a message and I'll be more than happy to uh, share tips with you and learn from you and you learn from me, but you can get a copy of the book at adventpreaching.com. Adventpreaching.com. It's on the back and it's at the top of the screen. Or if you have Amazon Prime, you can find it at Amazon.com and you get free two-day shipping. So if you order the book right now, you would probably get it no later than Monday. Or if you order on a Monday, you'll get it no later than a Wednesday and Thursday. That's the great thing about Amazon. So that's the two places where you can get it, at AdventPreaching.com. The good thing about getting it from Advent Preaching is that I sign all the copies that I'm sending out personally. Um, and then if you want to have the just a book from Amazon because you want it quick, you can get that from amazon.com. Awesome, awesome. So for those who are wanting to take their first initial step to knowing Jesus and becoming a witness for Jesus, you have some resources at adventpreaching.com. Can you actually point them to a, a couple of resources that you recommend them to watch or listen to or read first? Mm -hmm. as they begin the journey. Yeah, so if you go to adventpreaching.com, I would recommend we have great resources on with some of the preachers who have been sharing the gospel for many years and they're basically almost their whole ministries in their lives. Uh, great videos from Dr. Elizabeth Talbot. She talks about the three angels message uh, and just Isaiah and the Messiah and the love for Jesus and always pointing us to the cross. I would definitely start with that one. We have Hyvett Williams. She talks about her testimony and how God transformed her life. Dr. Hyvett Williams is amazing. One, uh, Derek, Dr. Derek Morris from the Hope Channel. He, he has an amazing video uh, series where he takes us through his presentations. That's on the top of adventpreaching.com. Um, President Ted Wilson, he talks about sharing the third angel's message in a time like this. And many more, um, Dr. Bill Kilgore, uh, Professor Soups from Southwestern Adventist University, Dan Cerns. Um, there's so many that are on there that I would recommend if you go through that list. And, and we have about 50, I believe, 50 videos up there and different trainings that you can watch these and continue to grow and develop as a as a powerful preacher for Jesus Christ. You know, this is and I, we were talking about this before we actually got on live here. I have never met another student that was so passionate about preaching and the art and craft and the delivery of preaching than uh, Pastor Christopher Finley here, yeah. and I am so glad that God has called you and that you have answered the call, and now you're extending the call to, to whomever that might be saying, hey, Lord, use me. I don't really know exactly how you're going to use me, but I'm right here. You're extending this call for them to really be students and learners with a posture of humility, and there are resources that you provide through your website and also with your most recent book on how they can get started with the journey. Pastor, All right. Pastor Justin, can I tell you the quick secret for everybody? Go ahead, go ahead. The, the ministry was started 
because of the calling that God placed in my heart to learn more. So it was really my excuse to learn more about preaching. So interviewing these people and going out there. So that's one tip. If you find a gift, if you find a talent that God places in your heart, find a way, pray to God uh, and allow God to lead you. And it may be a ministry. Like you could start a ministry about the gifts that God is you. It could be a music ministry, a preaching ministry, whatever, a prayer ministry where you can ask people, find out more about prayer. And, and now I spoke to God about this and saying, Lord, I want to dedicate my, my life to learning more about sharing your word more effectively. So, mm -hmm. so that's how all this came about from me praying to God and asking God, I want to learn more. I want to be a student for the rest of my life. By the grace of God, even if I'm 90 years old, 100 years old, I would love to still be a student of preaching, learning more every day of how to share the word of God more effectively. That is powerful. I want you guys to all take that to heart because learning, you know, listening and learning is the foundation for growth and for you to be most effective with the gifts that God has given you. And thank you so much, uh, Chris, for modeling that and sharing that with us. All right. So as we are about to wrap up our time, this is your appeal time your closing words to anyone who's watching to anyone that is that will be watching this later on what is your last appeal my appeal to everyone is uh simple preach jesus if you're gonna stand in a pulpit if you're gonna take that time to open up the word of god the gospel is the good news the gospel is words of encouragement the gospel is what transforms our lives. So I want to make an appeal to everybody. If you're going to open up the words of God, you can use this in a way you can beat people with the Bible. You can do things that can put people down and leave feeling like uh, cansado. That's like in Spanish, we call it tired. You're like, or you can use the word of God to uplift people, to show them the grace, the mercy, uh, the, the, the hope that's in Jesus. And yeah. that's what God calls us to do, to preach hope, to preach the gospel, to preach the good news. So I want to make an appeal to everybody. If you are going to preach, if you're going to take uh, uh, the opportunity, 30, 40 minutes of anybody's life, use it to uplift Jesus and to point those to Jesus Christ. Because Jesus said it, if I'm lifted up, I'll draw all men to me. So that's my appeal I want to make to everybody. Preach the transformation, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen to that. Amen. The last appeal. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for the appeal and the message to preach Jesus because Jesus is the Savior of the world. It's, he's our personal Savior and He is the answer to our question, our ultimate question. All right. Why don't we do this? Why don't we have you wrap us up with a word of prayer for all those who are, are watching or will be watching as they venture forth for this journey up ahead of them. Amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for everyone who has joined us or who will be watching this. Father, I pray a special prayer over the ministry of TX adults, TX youth, that you would just continue to use them in a mighty way. The team everybody who comes to the camp reads, to the live videos, put your Holy Spirit over everyone, Father, and just continue to use us as your children to share the good news, to share the gospel. Father, we ask that you forgive us of our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, but also to continue doing the good work in us so that when we finally see you face to face, we can hear those words, well done, my good and faithful servant, and we could join you in your kingdom forever. Thank you, Jesus, for everything. Thank you for dying on the cross for us and making a way where, where there was no way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Everything begins with Jesus, your relationship with Jesus, and it ends with Jesus. With that, we bid you a great evening. Thank you so much, Chris, for taking your time to be with us. And until next time, preach Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right.